What's up guys, good morning. Albert here, Albert Joseph, reporting for duty. Um, this is another breakdown video. You guys seem to like the last one and I don't have any interesting content to film right now. So, just gonna do these video breakdowns. This is James Stewart explaining all of his famous crashes throughout his career. So, quick 15 minutes of breaking all those down and giving you inside information as to what's causing these crashes. If you guys enjoy these rider breakdowns, what you can actually do is click the link in the description and get signed up for my Patreon account where you guys can actually send in your own riding footage where I will break down all of your riding videos for you. For only $2 a month and $6 a month for Patreon Gold respectively, you just can't beat that pricing to get your own riding footage analyzed. I highly recommend it, especially for those of you heading into the off season. This is a good time to kind of sharpen up on those skills and to create a better understanding of what it is you're doing on the bike. All right guys, enjoy the video. All right, now this one, Anaheim. Man, that's so many of these crashes are going to be due to stiff bike setup. It, if you watch his bike compared to Roxon's, it's just not going through the stroke at all, which is good. But as soon as those whoops get slick and you start, that is. <sighs> Ricky said in the broadcast he got lucky and he did. That could have gone heck of a lot worse than that. All right, this is Southwick. Same thing, very similar crash. Bike is just dancing around because it's so stiff. Even his outdoor setup is super stiff. That was a very, very similar crash to the Anaheim one. Very similar. Poor James has hit his head a lot. This is just different angle. Lands out in the pocket. Gets his weight a little too far forward. That's all she wrote. All right, this is... Red Bud, he did the same exact thing Ferrandez did this year. I think that was, was that a lapper maybe? Just locked handlebars as he was going by him. Ferrandez did the same thing this year to somebody. I forget who it was. That looked like a bad one too. All right, here's a signature front end wash into a corner. You see this a lot from Villapoto. You saw this a lot from Stewart throughout his career. These guys are just trying to get lean angle so early into a corner. My brother was watching these with me yesterday and he goes, I don't think I've ever seen you crash like that in a corner. And I said, yeah, because I'm not going fast enough. The reason he crashes and washes out is because he's initiating his, I don't know if you guys can see my clicker, wish I could draw on the screen, can't figure that out just yet, is he's initiating that corner very, very early on. So inside elbow could drop just a little bit and then that's going to end up just causing your front end to wash right out. Where I know that I shouldn't be doing this, but I tend to use corners as my rest zone, especially in Supercross. So I'm kind of using that first half of the corner to chill out, maybe stand a little deeper into the corner, not really push my limits, and then ramp up the acceleration on the exit where these top guys are starting that 10 feet earlier than where I am. So that's where this risk of washing out comes into play. All right, now this one here with Kennard that we're about to see, I'll let it play out for a second is something we saw a lot with James throughout his career and that and we see it with Dylan Ferrandez actually he made some silly decisions because he was just so gung-ho on going forward that he was never worried about first of all what was going on behind him and he wasn't really concerned with anybody around him either like right here with Kennard that could have been pretty easily avoided but he was just he was moving forward, and it was just a silly little thing. That's just tough block will get you. Riding the edges. Old Davy Millsaps behind him. Riding the edges, tough block will get you. Front end wash, bike too stiff. All right, now this is Thunder Valley. This is the section that claimed Tomac. And re this right here, that's somebody running across the track. Now, did that cause the crash? No, but did that mess up his focus just enough to where he he then made the mistake because his focus wasn't 100 percent. i would say that's very very likely so when he landed this i bet you he subconsciously saw that guy running and then this is a long sweeping corner very high speed section i taught a class here this summer and a little scary to carry that amount of speed down this hill 
because you have a little bit of lean angle the whole way. And if you start to lose the front and start to fall into the corner, then you got a long way to go to save that thing. You could try to save it with throttle, but which I'm sure he did. There's really not a whole lot you can do at that point. All right, now this is super interesting. It's cool to watch in slow-mo here. So he he's doing some type of quad figures because Stuart. He knows, and you could tell just by his body position here that he stiffens up a little bit because he's nervous. But watch what he does when he knows he's about to case this jump. And I was talking about this last video. He levels that bike out completely. Now, most people in this situation would panic and loft the front end like this. I don't know if you guys can see me down the corner. And then all that's going to do is when you hit that knuckle, it's going to throw you over the front. It takes a lot of courage to land, especially a big quad and supercross this way. But look at he's totally level, which on a peaked up landing actually means casing it with your front tire first. That takes a lot of courage, but it's the right way to do it because watch the way that this ends up bouncing him. For how hard of a hit, it bounced him pretty darn level. He would have been done for if he had cased that with the front end lofted. All right, Stuart Reed. This was an, I remember watching this one when I was younger. So him and Reed got together. This was a big controversy too. I think they show this from a different angle. It's Travis Preston. So he lands off the side of the track. This is another situation of Stewart not thinking about other people out there. Um, that is kind of the mindset you have to have to be at the level he was at, but it'll cost you. I mean, in this situation, he didn't even care to so much as look for a second. He just got right back on the track on the landing of a jump, which is really the most dangerous thing you could do. Preston had nowhere to go. I would have been pretty angry if I was Preston too. Oh, okay. Now poor Wyndham. I remember this one too, Vegas. All right. So let's rewind that. Um, these whips were giant. Stewart has always had one of the stiffest bike setups in Supercross. Probably the stiffest bike setup we've seen in Supercross. <clears throat> so it allowed him to skin the whoops insanely fast. But right there, I, I'm sure they'll show it again. If you can see my mouse, this whoop he missed with his front tire. And then this sets him a little bit on a teeter-totter. Yep, so now it kicks the back end. Now his back end missed this one. Now it's probably going to cause his front end to miss the next one. Oh, now, yeah. He got away lucky with it, but then poor Wyndham. Wyndham knew it was coming, but those big of whoops, you can't just let off. Okay, so this one is interesting. Very, very similar to the Reed first corner crash that I showed you guys last video. Stewart's sitting down. He goes to stand up before the roller. And what that does, see, he stands. And as he's standing to soak up the roller, he gets wheel spin. And then his weight in the pocket, I've paused it a little too late. His weight in the pocket here went too far forward, throwing his knees too far to the front. So he gets even more wheel spin off the second one. I mean, it was very, very similar to that Reed one, except Reed got it a lot worse than Stewart did there. Well, maybe not. All right, this is simple case of drop in the inside elbow. I mean, this is what I teach beginner level riders. Man, scroll. All right, so he's at the apex of the corner. When you watch right here, inside elbow drop. Now his head is gonna start falling. Look at where his head now is in relation to the front number plate. And then, boom, it'll put you down every time. I don't care if you're James Stewart or if you race the C-Class. Oh, man, and then just, I remember watching this one too. Then he just hits a kicker trying to jump the whoops. Yeah, uh, he just tried to push through the pocket a little too quick. If you see where his butt is, his butt shifted too far back to try to compensate. And all it did was toss him over the front. He was probably, I'm sure, still flus flustered from the crash a second before. That's just catching the old foot peg on the takeoff of the jump. Perfect execution of jumping off. If he had stayed on, that would have been a lot worse. All right, now this is Daytona jumping into a set of whoops, skimming, straight up just loops it. I mean, that's 450 power for you. That was not, no error other than giving it too much gas. 
All right, this is a good example of, this is exactly what he did when he got T-boned by Dungey. Is that in the early laps, you have to be really, really aware of, so this, this is, I'll use the, the cursor here to try to explain to you guys. Early laps, you have people in front of you that you're worried about, yeah, possibly squaring up or going around the outside. But when people are bunched up that much, you have to constantly be aware that there's going to be somebody coming up the inside of you in those situations. Even if it's not for them to try to pass you, they may be playing defense for the guys behind you. So Stuart squares up and uh, I don't know though, Reed, it didn't look like he had anybody behind him either. Where Dungey's situation is Dungey jumped into the, the inside where he couldn't stop. It looked like Reed was coming in hot regardless, but Stewart didn't even, didn't even care to look. Yeah, that was kind of both riders' faults a little bit. That was Reed probably trying to be a little bit overly aggressive. Yeah, because no, no one was behind Reed. That was Reed just going in for it. Now this, another situation. So he just moves straight over to the right um, intentionally. And he didn't realize until he was in the air that there was somebody there. I mean, that's stuff that I wouldn't see me doing. But then again, I'm, I'm not riding quite at that level. And I, I worry too much about what's going on around me. T bounces in. Knows he's going to case it, but he's kind of out of whack. He goes for the brake tap, but I don't know if he even got it. So when he cased it, he was too front end high. And what you saw that did is that clipped his rear tire, threw him into a bit of an endo and then he just didn't have the strength to hold on. So right here, he just collapses over the front of the bike. His hand comes off, and that was all due to the way he cased the jump before. If he had got that brake tap and leveled that bike out, that crash wouldn't have happened. Ooh, all right, Daytona Endo. I'll never forget watching this race. He was jumping the wall, he was doing a bunch of stuff. Nobody was. So he, when I teach riders the seat bounce for the first time, the very common mistake is they sit back too far in the seat. Now this was a pretty big triple. He probably messed up the turn and needed a little extra oomph to get up over this thing. I forget, this might've been something he was jumping that nobody else was that day, I can't remember. But the way he seat bounced it, he got that weight too far back and it just basically flung him into a front flip. When you seat bounce, there are t there's a time and place to lean back a little bit further if you need that extra oomph. But man, you really should try to stay as neutral as possible. Oh, no, I was wrong. Okay, so the reason, <laughs> holy cow, he's lucky that wasn't worse. So when he went to accelerate out of the corner, I forgot that's what happened. He wheelied. Let's see if I can catch this. He's in a wheelie right there. Holy cow. So. He dropped the front end right at the top. There was really no no good way that this could have ended. I think it could have been maybe even worse if he had wheelied over the takeoff of that sitting down. Because it probably would have pile drove him into the second one. <sighs> Man, that's a scary, scary situation. Yep, typical Stewart move. So tripling in. That should have been pretty obvious that, I don't know if that, was, who, if that was Jason Thomas or who that was, but doubles that and Stewart should have known, but Stuart, I mean, Stewart was just doing his thing. Ouch. All right, so this one, I've had this happen a couple of times, super scary. So he was going triple on to a tabletop. It's scary because the tabletops we have to land on are just about a bike length, a little bit over a bike length. So obviously timing is, is of the most importance. He went a little long. Now he still got the, I wish this was more clear, holy cow. He still got the front end on the landing, but he landed too deep. So what it did is it didn't give the bike time to compress and unload. All it did was the bike was still in the compression, which then pushed him through the landing of it and then just pile drove him into the next one. Here's a different angle. Yep, just basically jumps too deep. So instead of compressing and rebounding, he skimmed it more like a super cross whoop. All 
Oh, uh, yeah, that looked like Stewart hit neutral coming out of the corner. Because you can see he goes to stand up and falls over the front as if he hit neutral, and that was just racing incident. Reed would not have expected that to happen. Ooh, looks like he hit neutral there, too. You can just see, by the way, the bike fell off the backside of that on-off. Yeah, oh yeah, you can tell. He was in neutral. Now, that's the scary part. So, in Supercross, these guys are using first gear a lot nowadays. They have custom transmissions that it's very rare for them to hit neutral, but it is still possible. On my bike, I avoid first at all costs because there's like a over a 50-50 chance that if I go from first to second, I'm going to end up in neutral. So I bet you this was him coming out of the corner in first, trying to get that upshift to second. Oh, I think this is the Dungy incident. Yeah, so this is Reed, or Reed, this is Stewart squaring up on the first lap, or lap two, uh, trying to go under Anderson and that's what you have to be careful of in the early laps, especially in a section like this that's got a triple into the corner because Dungey went to the inside and obviously Dungey did not mean to T-bone Stewart here, but he just locks up the brakes and had absolutely nowhere to go. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you guys enjoy the way I break these things down, just a reminder to go to the Patreon account in the link below and get signed up for that. And make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel as well. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next video. Thank you.